Hi, this is Christian Cantrell, and I'd like to explain as quickly and simply as possible the concept of the Shadow DOM and Web Components. So this is a simple HTML page. We have some text up here, and we have a little loading animation below. And the way this would typically be done is you'd create a div in your source code, and you'd give it a specific ID. And then you'd point your UI component framework to that ID, and you would magically have a spinner or a combo box or a data grid or whatever it is that you asked for. So let's look at the code for, uh, for this example. And we have our content here. In our content, we have our text, as you'd expect, and here's our spinner, as you'd expect, with the ID spinner. But what you might not expect is that we have a uh, bunch of divs that have been injected here. And this is something that is typically done by your UI framework. So you can see, in this case, we have a bunch of divs and some CSS. So there's nothing necessarily wrong with this. Um, we're getting by with it today, and people are building some, some uh, really good applications with a lot of um, really, really good uh, UI component frameworks out there. But it's not a hugely robust way to program. And the reason is that if you were to do something like iterate through your DOM programmatically, um, you would find content that uh, is not in your source code and that you might not be expecting. Uh, you might also have things like variable or namespace collisions or CSS selector collisions, um, since there's a bunch of code being injected into your application that you're not aware of. And if you try to program around it, uh, the, the problem with that is that when you update your component framework, then you know, who knows what's changed and your application may not work as expected. So as I said, we're getting by with this today, but it's not the most robust way to program, uh, not the level of abstraction that we would sort of like to see. So let's look at the example using uh, Shadow DOM and Web Components. So this is the same, uh, same exact um, page here, more or less. We have our content and we have our text and below it we have our spinner. But what you'll notice here is that this div cannot be expanded. So we don't have a bunch of additional nodes that have been injected into the DOM. Uh, in other words, my DOM matches my source code um, in this case exactly, which is which is what we want to see. So there's nothing unexpected here. If I were to iterate through my DOM, I wouldn't get a bunch of, um, of additional nodes that I'm not expecting. So this is a, a much uh, sort of cleaner way of programming. Um, something else you might notice here is that I have an additional attribute. This is attribute, which is uh, the value of spinner. So where is spinner defined? If we look up here in the head, we see this link tag. and We see this uh, that we're linking in the, uh, the spinner uh, template. So let's take a look at the spinner template here. And this is its own HTML uh, document. So we have an element, we have a template, and we have our CSS here. But what you'll notice is that the CSS is actually scoped so that I don't have to worry about um, things like selector collisions and those kinds of things. Um, and then this component can be as you know big and ugly and complex as it wants to be. It can use as much HTML or JavaScript or uh, CSS as it likes, and it's not going to affect my original source code. My, my source code um, and my DOM continue to match and be exactly what I expect them to be. So this is a, a, nice, um, a nicer, more robust way to program. Uh, it's a nice level of abstraction that uh, most other programming languages and UI component uh, frameworks enjoy. So I think that it's time we, uh, we bring this kind of thing to HTML as well. Uh, the Shadow DOM and uh, web components are not uh, an official ratified specification and they're not being widely rolled out yet. They're still in sort of um, an early experimental stage, but uh, you can play with them. I'm using Chrome Canary here and uh, if you turn on a couple of flags, you can, uh, you can play with it and get a feel for it. And, uh, and you can give Google uh, your feedback. This is, uh, this is an initiative that Google's pushing forward. And I think that it's uh, something that the web really needs. So if you're interested in the Shadow DOM and uh, the component uh, and web components, then I'll put a uh, blog post URL in the description of the video, and uh, you can learn more. Thanks for watching.